So I ran a video about a year ago called Where Have All the Carpenters Gone? And in that video, I addressed some pretty harsh realities about the decline of the trades in modern America. In particular, the diminishing number of carpenters, my chosen trade. I opened a real can of worms there. To date, that video has garnered over a million views, 54,000 likes, and roughly 14,000 comments. That's 10 times more comments than my usual video that size. People wrote me from every corner of the country to tell me that where they lived, the story was much the same. They too were seeing severe trade labor shortages, with fewer and fewer young people joining the construction workforce. This is becoming not only a generational problem for us, but a societal problem. We're facing cultural headwinds unlike anything we've ever seen. We're in the digital age now, the information age, and it seems like the whole country is ready to go galloping into a future where everything is streamed in data, and the idea of doing tangible things is almost laughable. But the undeniable truth, the one solid reality that no one can get around, is this. The world still needs to be built. That's it. The world still has to be physically built. Everything from roads and highways, to houses and buildings, to factories and complex machinery. All the things we rely on for daily life still need to be built with these. So the trades are here to stay. But the question is becoming, will we be here for the trades? Will our next generation fill these swelling gaps in the trade workforce, or are we going to crater further into a labor shortage until we're so deep that we have no way out? It's a spooky topic, but we're gonna have to address it sooner or later. So that's what I'm talking about today on The Honest Carpenter Show. So I'll lay out the ground scenario for you. As of April, 2022, the construction industry alone faces a labor shortage of some 650,000 skilled tradespeople. And 600,000 of that is on top of normal losses from retirement and career switching. So like 90% of that figure is pure deficit. And when you zoom out to look at all the trades, the problem just expands. The US Bureau of Labor Statistics did a review recently and found that nearly 8 million skilled labor positions were lost during the pandemic. Of those 8 million, we've managed to claw back about half, but 4 million vacancies still remain across all skilled labor positions. And we're realizing now that those numbers might not get much better. Why? The Great Resignation seems to be in full effect. Amongst the 8 million who fled during the pandemic, many of them were early retirees, workers who decided it was just finally time to hang it up. They were done driving the truck or turning the wrench. In my own trade, carpentry may suffer from this worse than any other profession. My friend Misha Fisher is an economist who studies the construction labor market. He ran some numbers for me, analyzing the percentage of workers who identified themselves as carpenters from the year 1950 to present day. What Misha found is that our total percentage of carpenters actually peaked around 1980, most likely during the construction boom that brought my own family from the Northeast to the Southeast to build houses in North Carolina. But since the 1980s, we've seen a 33% decrease in carpenters alone. And if you isolate those numbers down further just to focus on young people, what we'll call ages 16 to 40, that decrease amounts to a staggering 46%. Nearly half of our young carpenters gone. This is especially relevant because once again, our current skilled trade labor workforce is rapidly aging. According to a recent Associated Builders and Contractors analysis, the industry's average age of retirement is 61, and one-fifth of our current workforce is over 55. So another 20% of our skilled labor pool in construction could completely vanish in the next five years. On top of our previous losses, this effect will be staggering. And I feel like these days we do a good job of ignoring this because the other shoe has not quite yet dropped. Instead, we feel the effects as sort of a stagnation, a difficulty finding contractors, and a difficulty hiring workers. But all evidence suggests that a full-blown collapse is like no more than 10 years out, quite possibly less. And at that point, what had once seemed like a painful nuisance will suddenly become an economy-threatening disaster. The problem is so bad that a number of large corporations have actually stepped up by privately contributing funds to address the issue. Home Depot's Path to Pro program has put up some $50 million to provide no-cost training opportunities for those seeking trade educations. Stanley Black & Decker has likewise contributed $25 million to similar initiatives. And at the governmental level, some states are really leading the charge. In particular, Tennessee has taken a huge step by providing free technical college enrollment for all graduating high schoolers, which is very impressive. And yet our trade recruiting is still critically lagging. In fact, we're having an extremely hard time even getting the message across to young people that they should maybe consider taking up the trades. Why is this? Obviously, because we spent so long telling them that these jobs aren't worthwhile. 
We've been beating down the trade since the 1970s, and we continue to do it, at least tacitly, today. And I'm far from the first person to discuss this. Mike Rowe has famously defended the trades as a public advocate, and he said all this more eloquently than I could over the last decade or more. As a former tradesman, I greatly appreciate his efforts. But just looking around, it's obvious that we've not yet begun to put a dent in the negative public perception of the trades. In fact, sometimes I can't tell if kids these days are even aware that the trades exist. We're just not represented anywhere in popular culture. Stanley Black & Decker has actually done an amazing job documenting this phenomenon. Their Makers Index is analyzing year over year how young people not only perceive the trades, but how likely they are to take part in them as professionals. What they found has been both fascinating and surprising. For instance, many people seem to think that young people don't like the trades because they don't want to do manual labor anymore. But of the surveyed young people who responded negatively towards trade jobs, only 12% cited a dislike of manual labor as their reason for avoiding the trades. Instead, the vast majority of them seem to have no awareness that good trade jobs actually exist and no belief that they could actually be trained for these jobs. It's as though the trades exist on the far side of this hazy veil. There's something that young people vaguely know about, but the concept is as distant to them as a hostile foreign planet. So what we really have is a perception problem. And several decades of trashing the trades as a punishment for a life misspent has only enforced this more deeply. So we can continue to pump more money into trade school expansion and job initiatives, and I think we should. But if we can't convince enough young people that these jobs are worthwhile, that they're even enjoyable, then I'm still afraid that we'll never see the sort of mass attendance that we need. So, how do you fix this? How can you really alter young people's perception of the trades? There's no way around it. This is going to be outrageously difficult. We're playing catch up here. After gutting our shop classes and vocational programs from public schools over the last three decades, we created a generation that, in many instances, has never learned any handy skills at all. And it's not their fault. We didn't provide them any opportunity to learn this stuff. And now we're sort of just springing it on them at the age of 17 or 18 when recruiters are suddenly approaching them about joining the trade workforce. A handful might take it up, but the vast majority will stick with everything they've been told up to this point. Go to a four-year college. Try to get an office job. Avoid manual labor. We're stuck in these brackish waters of messaging, trying to undo what we've so effectively done over the last 50 years. And it's presenting a real gridlock for trade recruiters trying to address the labor shortage. I'll admit, it seems sort of hopeless at times, but I often still rack my brain for ideas, as I think everyone should. And I actually saw something the other day that resonated with me. Matt Pinella is a fellow YouTuber and a great young carpenter out in California. I've been following him for a while, and he's really made himself into a terrific advocate for the trades, especially in his area. He posted something on LinkedIn a few weeks back that I thought was brilliant. He asked, why aren't we implementing the trades at a younger age these days? Like kindergarten to sixth grade. Now, most people would think this is crazy, or at least far-fetched. I mean, we can't get trade education into our high schools. How are we ever going to get it into elementary schools? But crazy or not, I think what he's talking about is not only an important first step in revitalizing the trades, I think it's actually the only way we can address the severe messaging problem we have with our youth. I mean, think about it. When are kids really going to be most excited about trade-related things? It's not middle school. Young people are just developing their social personalities at that age. So much of their energy is tied up in finding friend groups, establishing an identity. The distractions are too numerous. And as I said, by high school, a lot of their perceptions are already set. They know who they are for the most part, and they're probably just confused when trade recruiters finally show up and say, Hey kid, put on a hard hat. But one age group in particular has always showed an undying interest in trucks, trains, and big earth movers. This one right here. How many people have a kid who loves to watch the dump truck go by? How many people have a kid who stops to watch the folks with tool belts climbing a roof? The trades are still very fascinating to K-6 through kids. They haven't got the message yet that this stuff isn't cool, or that they're better off staring at a computer screen all day. Kids see through very clear eyes, and they see just how interesting the trades can really be. And I think if we're going to spend a lot of time and money messaging towards an age group, at least some of it needs to be directed towards this one. And this is compounded by the fact that we currently have nothing for these kids. Bob the Builder is dead. That TV and book empire has all but vanished, and nothing has shown up to replace it. To me, this represents a gaping hole in the education and entertainment industry. We have absolutely no trade-related content for kids. 
like none. And lately, since it seems like nobody else has any ideas to put forth, I've started to think that I might personally like to try to take a stab at it. I've sort of already had this idea kicking around in my head for a few years. So here it is, and I hope you'll help me with it. When I was experimenting with logos in my early YouTube career, I developed this one. He's my cartoon guy. I call him James. And I specifically made him with the idea that he might one day be able to serve as sort of an ambassador to kids for the trades. I envisioned sort of a line of books about a wide variety of trade-related knowledge. What exactly would the books cover? Everything. All the practical knowledge that we're failing to pass down these days. For instance, how does water get into our houses and where does it go when it leaves? How does electricity magically show up in our outlets? Why do some buildings fall down when others don't? And how do we actually build amazing structures like these pencil-thin skyscrapers in modern cities? The topics are essentially endless, but the focus would always be on the techniques that we use to build our society and the things that we've learned about construction dating clear back to the ancient world. The books themselves would sort of be like a mashup between the DKI Witness books, which I was thoroughly obsessed with when I was young, and the Captain Underpants style comic books that kids love. An equal blend of education and entertainment. And James would be the amiable host through these topics. People who watch my channel know that I like to write. Just a couple months back, I self-published my own fantasy series for kids, the Dungeon World books, and I've been extremely grateful for the outpouring of support people have shown me. But it prompted many of my viewers to ask, why didn't you write some construction-related books for kids? And what I've had to tell them is that I really want to, I just don't have the means for doing it. Working with an artist to illustrate Dungeon World, even an artist as brilliant as Michelle Nobles, has shown me what an outrageously difficult task it is to produce a book. It took us like nine or ten months just to illustrate these five short books. I don't have the wherewithal to produce books of this complexity on my own. I need the help of a small publisher. And so I'm asking everyone out there watching, if you have any contacts who you think might be willing to help, please show them this video. I'm not sure traditional publishers will be interested, but maybe some of our trade-related presses will. For instance, perhaps Taunton Press, home of the world-renowned fine home building and fine woodworking, or possibly the National Association of Home Builders. They have their own publishing division, Builder Books, which has even published a children's book already. If I had the support of a small publishing company, I think we could create a lot of really great books in a really short amount of time. And I also suspect that some of the large companies pouring money into trade education would probably come to our aid where marketing was concerned. And yes, I think it would be great to have these books in bookstores. I would love that. But probably even a better place for them might be right here in the major home improvement stores. Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace Hardware. They already sell books in these stores, and I think Honest Carpenter books would be a perfect fit. We have a big problem with kids scattering through the lumber aisle. Let's give them something to do, something to look at. Put it right up here near the front, where they're out of harm's way. It's just my small idea. But if we're really going to tackle the trade labor shortage, it's going to take efforts at every level of society. And I think the best place to start, probably the most effective place to start, is right here. So that's my pitch. I hope you'll help by sharing the video and maybe even sending a message to any contact who you think might be interested. Who knows, Mike Rowe, if you're out there watching, maybe you've got a contact you can throw my way. Never hurts to ask. At any rate, that's my time for the week. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to check back in for more videos soon. And I hope you'll consider subscribing. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.